Hey everyone, welcome back to the Good Doctors continuing coverage of Netflix's Juggernaut, The Crown. <laughs> I am Dr. Kristen. I'm Dr. Erin. And today we are talking about episode six, which covers Charles's, Charles's investiture as the Prince of Wales. Yes, in a title we cannot pronounce. Twizig, Twizig Kimru. I can say Kimru, I know, but I, I don't know what the, sorry Welsh friends. We do not speak Welsh. We do not speak um, Welsh. We have deep affection for Wales. We do. Um, but not necessarily its language. <laughs> Very challenging. It's a lot of consonants. It's a lot um, of consonants. So two things real quick. Um, we, we don't do moment by moment recaps and that's not gonna change. And the second thing is that the most um, kind of prescient thing to us professionally is the um, ethno nationalist conflict that's happening in Northern Ireland while the events of the show are happening that yeah. the show has chosen to not engage with on any level. Um, so starting with this episode, more than even in past episodes, we're going to be telling you what's happening in Northern Ireland yeah. while the events of the show are happening. That's right. I just got my book with my timeline. Look at all of these historical events that are happening while Charles is preparing for his investiture. So just a real quick overview of this episode. It was, um, investiture is literally like a promotion to royalty. It's not a coronation. That's Investiture is different. There is no divinity in an investiture. There is no religious aspects of an investiture. There is in a coronation. So um, an investiture is, is uh, an official promotion to a specific title. Um, and it's time for Charles to take his as the Prince of Wales. There have been previous Princes of Wales, but it's not a permanent position that needs to be filled. It's only onto the heir apparent of the, of the queen or king. Right. Um, so, so the previous the, Prince of Wales was the Duke of Windsor. Mm -hmm. Yes. So previous, like while this is happening, also happening is a kind of an uprising of Welsh nationalism within yeah, fascinating. Wales. Fascinating. Fascinating. fascinating that is largely nonviolent, although there are violent elements of the, right? You read about there were some bombs that went off and... Yeah, so uh, particularly on the day of the investiture, um, it was an interesting thing that was left out, um, but there were, you, this Welsh nationalist movement, there was a, a violent faction of it um, that planted bombs in and around the locations uh, of the investiture and around the town. Um, one of them went off, I believe. I'm trying to remember. I'll have share the recap um, with the information in it in the show notes. Um, one of them was stopped, uh, and like one of them was supposed to go off when the queen's carriage was passing by. So, like, very, very serious potential uh, damage to property and potential loss of life from bombs that would have gone off, um, which was not an element of the Welsh, Welsh nationalism, it's hard for me to say, um, that we saw in this episode. We saw the more like politically, culturally minded aspects of Welsh nationalism, but yeah. And so because of that, Harry Wilson's government felt that it would be appropriate to send Charles to the university, what, the generic university. There's a lot of universities in Wales. Oh, no, it was Aberystwyth. It was Aberystwyth, great. So I they know. sent him to Aber to learn Welsh. Our, so one that, of our dear friends is from Aberystwyth, so um, that was very exciting for me. I was like, oh, there's John's dad's sheep farm. And I'm not kidding, because that's what his dad does in Aberystwyth. Um, but it was very exciting. And Aberystwyth itself is kind of an epicenter for the Welsh language movement and a lot of Welsh nationalism as well. So it made, that was the place to go to kind of learn the Welsh language. So Charles goes off for three months. We know at the beginning of his journey, he's very petulant about it. This was done against his will. Um, yeah. You know, it would be the equivalent of taking somebody from Manhattan and moving them to Nebraska. Um, <laughs> culturally, from Charles's perspective, he, was, he, was, he gave off to Anne quite a bit on the phone about it, um, which side note, I love him and Anne together. That's they're just, so, they're, the they're acting, swell. The casting of Josh O'Connor and Aaron Dougherty in this it's perfect genius. Yep. Absolutely genius, particularly Josh O'Connor, who has done some serious, serious heavy lifting in acting in um, the latter half of this season. 
So he goes, he gets assigned to a tutor who also happens to be one of the heads of the Welsh nationalist movement. So there's a little bit of emotional dissonance there. <laughs> but throughout the three months, Charles learns that the Welsh are people. Uh-huh. And perhaps have opinions that should be listened to and a language that should be respected. Goals and aspirations. Who knew? Who knew? Um, and there's a lot about nationalism and the colonizer relationship that could be really explored in this episode for a long time. I love some of the way that we talked about it and how the professor was so clear with this is why what you just did was hurtful. Yeah. This and, is and particularly the the implications of what the investiture means. Correct. Um as the act of a colonizer on a native an indigenous like group of people um, and the history of using Carnarvon, I know I mispronounced that, castle. Um, and it's very much similar, I, I, I think, in my knowledge of, my potted knowledge of Scottish history to like the, the stone of Scon that was stolen, that was taken and that historically in Scotland was a stone in which the kings of, high kings of Scotland were crowned over. Um, and it was taken uh, by the British and put under the throne in Westminster Abbey. Um, so it's kind of one of Where the, it still resides. Where it still resides. It's attempted uh, to be stolen several times, but it still is under the, the throne in Westminster Abbey. Um, but a similar kind of appropriation of cultural symbols and use. Yeah. Uh, so the, I thought all of that was really, really fascinating in the episode. So in the episode, one very significant historical thing did not happen, yeah. which is that Charles did not add any of his own language to the speech. Nope. Um, and so if you, and it's very challenging for me personally, and I believe Dr. Aaron agrees with me, to believe that Charles is, is on any level a burgeoning nationalist <laughs> for the Welsh people. Um, uh, yeah, in, I mean, I think... It just doesn't, he hasn't done anything else he, to ever indicate this. Um, I mean, I think the, the Prince of Wales Trust, which he establishes, uh, has done a lot for Welsh people. But yeah, t so I think that there's one way to go. And I think, he, I think it's entirely plausible that he gained a level of sympathy and empathy yeah. and understanding for the Welsh people. Um, to then turn that into kind of the radical nationalism, and it was radical at the time in the speech. Um, and also- uh, Which you should me, have seen, by the way, that all the natives were looking at each other, by the way. So you, sh like that was one, that, that's what I think Peter Morgan, the or who the, the, the director was, like the Welsh people were shocked by what he was saying and yeah. kind of uncomfortable with it. Like they yeah. didn't know where it was coming from. And also, like, interestingly, um, and I mean, I'm sure a lot of people invited to this event would have been Welsh language speakers, but to show that, like, everyone is a fluent Welsh language speaker and, like, would understand his speech is also not true. Correct. Um, uh, so for me, I was just like, yeah, sure. E literally everybody watching the speech has every idea what he's saying. No, that is not um, uh, how the Welsh language works, very similarly to how the Irish language is um, dying out in Ireland. Um, but yeah, for me to go from like sympathy and empathy to like this super strong nationalism was weird. And to, be to believe that Charles was stupid enough to think that his mother wasn't gonna get a translation of the speech. Like for me, that was like, yeah. oh no, they won't know, they won't know I've said it. Well, it'll be fine. I'm like, no. There are Welsh language speakers who are loyal to the crown and we'll translate that for her. Like, of course she's going to get a translation of the speech. Like, you love it. Yeah. Like, and so it just seemed to me playing into a naivete of Charles that I don't necessarily believe that he has or had. Um, again, he, he, like, it's one thing to tell us that I guess he's not really been raised by these parents because they've no. been so far removed and they've told us that. But <sighs> to be raised, raised in such a completely isolated seat of privilege for so long. And then all of us, it's like three months in Aber and, and he's, you know, su supporting Plaid Kemru. Like I didn't. 
which like developmentally is possible. Let me say that. Like that is a developmental yeah. thing that could very much happen because the shock of difference can turn people blah, 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 blah. But also in this episode, that's not, I did not get the impression that that was the story Peter Morgan was trying to tell. Like this was just better television. Yeah. And that's fine. Um, and that's fine. Like I said, it's a really fascinating episode. Again, um, and Olivia Coleman's most significant contribution to this episode was wearing the world's ugliest hat. <laughs> the scene with her and Charles at, at the end was something, um, was, it was also, yes, you brought that up offline. Was brilliantly acted, but for me, it didn't quite ring true. So again, we're getting this, and this is a similar theme we talked about in the first two seasons as we watched kind of, uh, Elizabeth grapple with um, this this idea between duty and choice and representing who you are versus who you are supposed to be. Um, you know, the, the tension between Elizabeth Windsor and Elizabeth Regina was a huge theme of the first two seasons. So it's no surprise that they are now uh, dealing with this in some way as Charles is growing up even though like it's funny to watch this because it seems like they're preparing him to be king and we all know in the year of our lord 2019 like lizzie lizzie is still kicking it so it's really funny to watch this like of course they would prepare that she's gonna die because like she's getting older um and he's supposed to be king but like talk about the long game um but for me, so I thought it was interesting that they brought up this idea of duty and choice and, and um, personal opinions and all of this kind of stuff. But I thought it's one thing to show an Elizabeth that is emotionally removed from her son, because they've shown us that. And she, ha she felt like she had to in order to raise like the monarch, or she felt like she couldn't connect with him because he is her replacement, whatever. But to show her being like deliberately cruel, uh, for me, when she had that conversation with her grandmother and we saw it on the show where her grandmother said like, you cannot be both people anymore. You have to be Elizabeth Regina. But her grandmother did it with love and with empathy and with compassion um, and understanding that this was really a difficult thing to do. And you want to show me an Elizabeth Regina that's like, stop making it difficult, Charles. Like, nobody gives a, an F what you have to say. Like, suck it up and be a robot. Didn't, like, it didn't jive with me. Um, I, I thought the acting was fantastic. I felt really bad for Charles. I think that was the point. Um, Peter Morgan is really, really heavy hitting with empathy for Charles in this season. Um, but I, it left me feeling kind of icky. Um, and maybe that's because they made the queen a very sympathetic character for the first two seasons, and now they're making her a little bit more problematic. I don't know. But I, I don't know that that made sense to me, that she would have that same conversation with her son, completely devoid of compassion. Completely. But maybe yeah, the only thing that I could do is that she was doing it in anger because she was so mad and she tried not to have a conversation with him that night and he pushed yeah. it. And he pushed it. So, it possible. And so that was like, cause I was thinking of the times that like, I mean, I was thinking of the times where I've tried to talk about serious things like that with my parents. Yeah. And timing is everything with hard conversations with your parents, especially no, parents with a temper. True. It's very true. And so that, that for me, that's what hit more is like, Charles you don't know your mom either. Like your mom doesn't know you and you don't know your mom. Yeah. Um, like you are not the only victim here either. And so, but also at 21, there was nothing in Charles's life to equip him to understand his mother as a human being. Right. So it was a messy scene for me. I didn't feel as icky as you did, but um, I also, I, it was all, I was just like, okay, so dramatologically, I am supposed to have 100% empathy for Charles here. Yeah. Noted. Thank you, Peter Morgan. We got it. And then yeah. as I look at the further, what we're going to cover, we're getting into Camilla. Yeah. And the slow moving train wreck that is the courtship of Camilla, Char the triangle of, of, of Camilla, Charles, and Diana. Oh, so oh, oh, it's, oh. it's going to be brutal. It's so if you want to, in which Charles is often internationally presented as the villain. 
So if part of this show's purpose is to recast, and Camilla is the other woman, so part of it is to recast the fact that truly Diana is the other woman, if that's where he's going with this, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's going to be really interesting. So, um, Dr. Aaron. Yeah. What happened in Northern Ireland during this episode? That's it. I think what I would like to end with on this, uh, and I have to say this, I absolutely, I love this episode as an episode of television. Um, the fact that it started with Harold Wilson telling the Queen about nationalist stirrings in Wales made me very, very angry. Um, because if you want to talk about nationalist stirrings, I would There like were a few across the Irish Sea. There were a few across the Irish Sea, a short hop, skip, and a jump from Aberystwyth, really, um, it, on a much more violent and destructive level um, than these s- stirrings uh, in Wales. So this, uh, the investiture was in July of 1969. So this episode covers basically like the spring of 1969 because he goes three months before the investiture to learn Welsh. Um, Really 1968 is when a lot of people like to mark the start of the conflict in Northern Ireland, even though historically it's a lot more complicated than that. But the first real... I'm in 1690, but you know. Yeah, I mean, you can go back a, a ways depending on, on what your perspective is. Um, but the first real outbreak of violence was in October of 1968 uh, when a civil rights march um, was uh, disrupted by police who battened civil rights marchers. Um, And that led to a series of civil rights marches that were met with violence from uh, the Royal Ulster Constabulary, the police force, and several um, special constabulary groups that were also part of police forces uh, in Northern Ireland. Uh, By January 1969, we had a very violent march um, uh, from Belfast to Londonderry that was attacked by both the police and loyalist protesters at a place called Burntollet Bridge, um, and that was in January 1969. uh, We also have a series of bombings taking place in 1969 at electric substations and other utility substations that were causing a great disruption uh, in Northern Ireland. Uh, But for me, this is like, this episode and the next episode is so interesting for where it's situated because July 1969 um, was, re- was kind of the precipice at the cliff edge before Northern Ireland really, really fell off that cliff edge. And it falls off the cliff edge in August of 1969. So, I mean, there was a lot happening um, in 1969 in Northern Ireland, but the fact that episodes six and seven take place right before um, massive rioting uh, in August of 1969 in Derry, London Derry, and Belfast over the 14th and 15th uh, of August, leading to a significant outbreak of violence called the Battle of the Bogside in Derry, and also leading to, for me, one of the biggest events of British history, really, is the sending of British troops to Northern Ireland, which would mark the longest operation for the British Army in its history. And they arrived on the ground in August, uh, 15th of August, 1969, and did not leave until 2007. So it's, and again, the investiture is a big deal. I'm not saying it was a bad idea to have it as an episode theme, uh, but things are getting real, real serious. in a part of the United Kingdom over which Harold Wilson is the prime minister and the queen is the sovereign. Um, And it, yeah, there's like, we talked about this offline. There's like three parts to me watching this season. I'm enjoying a lot of the episodes. I'm mad that they're wasting Olivia Coleman's acting talent and reduced the queen to a secondary character. And then the third part of me is just always incandescently angry that they that they did not find time or space for Northern Ireland. 
And I understand the instinct that like, oh, that's so complicated. We're not going to touch it. 100%. Again, mentions would be fine. Like it's, it's just, it goes back again. We're like, this isn't, I mean, like this isn't how we would tell this story. No, this isn't how we would tell this story. And because we have, uh, a, a YouTube channel, we get to say that. Um, <laughs> um, and obviously, I doubt I doubt Netflix would have picked up our version, but who knows? Um, <laughs> but it's 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 also for anyone who was watching this, and you're like, why are they making such a big deal about it? The erasure of Northern Ireland is a perpetual theme throughout the 20th and 21st centuries in British politics. So this is coming on the back of some real frustration, not only on our part, but on the part of nearly everybody we love regarding the narrative of Brexit in Northern Ireland. This is yeah. about um, the fact that Northern Ireland is only on the news for Game of Thrones or bombing. The fact, like, it's it's a it's a culmination of like oh of course another British guy, another Brit, another British man, another yeah. English man another ignoring English Northern Ireland. So I, this isn't yeah and like this isn't just about the show. And I know you might you guys at home might be like good lord they stop waffling. I respect that, but yeah, in every space that we can, Dr. Aaron and I have kind of committed to bringing Northern Ireland to every space possible where it is appropriate because it is erased so often yeah. um, and for me I think that's what made I can I can forget it uh, sometimes in in other episodes of this season but for me having an episode of television that was entirely about a nationalism. nationalist movement in the United Kingdom that wanted self-determination um like when they actually said we're talking about home rule I was like you know who first talked about that oh uh, yes not um, first, but you know who has also talked about that? Yeah. Both the Scottish and the Irish. And like Yeah, and this this concept of self-determination um and some sort of self-governance uh in the United Kingdom is something that, that happens throughout the 20th century um in all of these parts. So uh, and eventually all, all disparate parts of the United Kingdom get de devolved government and and um some form of self-determination but it's like the reason northern ireland exists is because there was a nationalist movement for self-determination in ireland um literally the reason the country exists in the first place and so for me that's what made this episode particularly difficult because it like just the phrase nationalist stirrings um, yeah, guys, she was off and running on that one like the minute he said that we lost aaron for this episode <laughs> I, I literally, I was watching it with my mother and I had to pause and just, she just let me rant for a few minutes. Um, Cause that's just a phrase writ written by a an English man who doesn't give a flying fig. Um, and to show this much empathy and compassion for Welsh nationalism in a season that ignores what is going to take place in Northern Ireland over this exact same period of history is also very, very difficult to watch. So. But we're doing it for you guys. <laughs> but we're gonna keep going. Through we're the gonna keep season. going. We're gonna keep doing it. So I think that really does wrap up everything we've got about an investiture. Yeah, um, so that's we'll, all I have. So we'll see you for episode seven, in which guys, we're going to the moon. We're going to the moon, moon landing time. Take care. See you then.